want to offer my dhanabhas to all the Vaishnavas who are assembled in the Hare Krishna land to celebrate Prabhupada's 124th Vyas Puja. I'm sorry, I'm not in a position to be with all of you physically in Bombay. But since Raja Hari Prabhu requested me to speak for some time, I'm taking this opportunity. So Srila Prabhupada was not an ordinary personality. Srila Prabhupada was sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially to fulfill the, his prediction that the Holy Name will be chanted in every town and village of the world. Srila Prabhupada had only one goal in mind, to make everyone Krishna conscious. As we know, Prabhupada spent considerable time with the Hare Krishna land in Bombay. He and a great desire to develop a major center. Prabhupada first went to the West, established Krishna Conscious Centers in America, Europe. Then he came back to India. He knew that unless India takes to Krishna Consciousness, he will get spiritually ruined. So Prabhupada came to India and he wanted a temple in the principal cities of India, Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi, Madras. Prabhupada called Bombay the gateway of India. The first real center that we had in Bombay was in Akash Ganga. And very interestingly, the Pakistan High Commission was also located in that building. And to make it more interesting, the Bangladesh war broke out at that time. We were tenants in the Akash Ganga building and the, and the Pakistani embassy was there. In the early days, there was a suspicion among the Indians that we may be American agents. And at that time, India was, India's foreign policy was very much pro-Russia. Anyway, Prabhupada wanted to build a major temple in Bombay. And when we were in Akash Ganga, he was regularly going in the morning, after the morning walks, to different parts of Bombay to look for that. Then somebody told Prabhupada, there is a land owned in Juhu by the sheriff of Bombay. And that land is for sale. At that time, Juhu was considered something very distant. And Prabhupada immediately said, let me go and see that land. When Prabhupada first came to see the land, he saw this was a jungle. But Prabhupada agreed to take the land. Prabhupada remembered that when he was regularly visiting Srimati Maharaj's house, he saw this same land, which was nothing but a forest at that time. And Prabhupada told Krishna, if you ever give me this land, I'll make a temple for you. So do it. That assurance that Prabhupada gave immediately when it came back in Prabhupada's mind. So Prabhupada proceeded to buy this land. Prabhupada's senior disciples said, Prabhupada, we're not going to go to Juhu. Juhu is so far. The place is a jungle. We are Americans. We, practice, we can't practice so much austerity, Prabhupada said. You want to go back to Godhead or no? He said, yes. Then you have to practice austerity. Well, without austerity, you can't progress spiritually. So, 
the land was bought, and Prabhupada wanted to secure the land. So at that time, our big panda and the cross Manan in Bombay was just over. When Prabhupada first came to India, he organized big pandas in Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi, Madras. And it made thousands of people came. About 30,000 people were coming to Prabhupada's lectures and the cross Manan. So Prabhupada, uh, wanted to secure the Hare Krishna land. And Prabhupada knew that the best way to secure is by installing the deities. So they were the deities that were worshipped at the Cross Milan festival were brought to the Hare Krishna land due by our late dear God Brother Brahmananda who kept the deities on his lap in a Fiat taxi from Akash Ganga to Ju. So Prabhupada stole the deity. But then Prabhupada discovered that the owner had wrong intentions. And the owner had earlier cheated some other people also. So then there was litigation. And the litigation went on for a long period. But finally, Prabhupada won the battle. Prabhupada said, what's a victory? And that was a long struggle. And Prabhupada asked, my dear God, Brother Kira Swami, to write a book on the struggle the Hare Krishna land. So it was a struggle to get this land. And Prabhupada often used to talk about the struggle at the Hare Krishna land. Then we wanted to do the construction. And when we wanted to do the construction, there was great obstruction even then, especially one local politician had his eyes on this land. He wanted to make a hotel over here. And naturally, there was a temple that would not be possible. So many obstacles were there in getting the permission to start the construction. And that was phase two of the battle. It went on for some time. And finally, we got the permission and the construction of the Hare Krishna land started around September of 1975. We were building the temple and Prabhupada had a great desire that the temple be completed ASAP as soon as possible. But unfortunately, we were not able to complete the temple during Prabhupada's presence on the planet, but we did a few months later. Prabhupada had a great desire for the Hare Krishna land, a purely transcendental. Prabhupada gave the Hare Krishna land another name, heaven on earth. Heaven on earth means wherever you go, you get reminded of Krishna, you get the holy name. The Hare Krishna land, construction was going on. And Prabhupada at that time was residing on the fifth floor of his quarters. Construction was going on downstairs where the workers were doing tick, 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 tick. The devotee went to Prabhupada and said, Prabhupada, I hope we're not disturbing you. Disturbing? It is Kirtan, because you are doing that construction to make a temple of the Lord. So we had a very grand opening in uh, 1978 in which 
several politicians participated and which was very widely covered. The music magazine, which at that time was a leading magazine, sent a reporter to India to cover that. And they had a story headline, From Rags to Riches. The problem went to America with 40 feet. Now we constructed such a problem. So Prabhupada had great expectations from the Hare Krishna land. And Prabhupada also had very deep roots with the city of Bombay. For example, Prabhupada was in Bombay in 1972 when he helped the Guru establish their center in Bombay. Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasvati Thakur, came to Bombay to inaugurate, uh, to inaugurate that building and to install the deities. And the other members of the Goryamas remarked, the Rabbi Baba Babu has worked very hard in completing this building. We should make him the temple president. Bhagdisnanaji said, No, at the right time, he will do it. So Prabhupada struggled, and then Prabhupada had his desire to go to the West, and Prabhupada had residence in Andheri not far from Juhu, where he was residing in the Sindhya colony. At that time, Prabhupada virtually had no money. And Prabhupada used to walk from Andheri to the, from the Sindhya colony to Andheri every day, but he could not afford the bus fare. It just shows us how determined Prabhupada was to serve. Then later on, Prabhupada was publishing the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, and he needed assistance. So he came to Bombay, and after completing the three volumes of well, only one of Canto One, Papa thought he was now equipped to go abroad to preach. Papa was struggling to find a means to go abroad. He explored different channels, and then uh, everyone, somebody suggested, "Why don't you go to Bombay?" And there's a pious lady, she may help you. And this pious lady had helped Prabhupada in publishing the Srimad Bhagavatam. So when Prabhupada approached her, she said, Are you going to go back to America at this age? You may die. And almost everyone discouraged him. He wanted to fly, but he could not fly. It was too expensive. And he wanted he was ready to go by ship. He could not afford the fare. So he finally settled to go on a cargo ship. And in that cargo ship, there was only one cabin, which was worth a passenger using it. So Prabhupada, came to Bombay, secured his documents, and finally, then he left for Calcutta. Prabhupada went to Calcutta, where the ship was ultimately going to sail from uh, Calcutta. Mrs. Choksi was a pious lady. She had a sexy Choksi Choksi, buy warm clothes for Prabhupada. 
he told the captain of the ship, you're carrying a sadhu with you, please carry extra vegetables and fruits. He made sure the Prabhupada was well taken care of. And then Prabhupada went from Bombay to Calcutta. Upon arriving in Calcutta, Prabhupada went to Mayapur. He offered obeisances to Bhakti Siddhanta. And then he came to Calcutta because the ship was due to sail from Calcutta. And then the ship was called Jaladuta. So Prabhupada did some programs in Calcutta. He published a booklet called My Mission, which Prabhupada wrote about his mission. And he he wrote about his vision of having the Srimad Bhagavatam printed in 60 volumes. This was Prabhupada's original desire that the Bhagavatam printed in 60 volumes. And then finally, Prabhupada sailed from Calcutta on the Juladuta to America. So the point we are making is the Bombay Temple is historical. Prabhupada built it with great, great, great struggle. It was Prabhupada's war against Maya, but he was victorious. Then when Prabhupada was proceeding to uh, proceeding to do the construction, again they were obstruction. But Prabhupada was determined. And then finally, people were discouraging people from going to the West. But he was determined to carry out the orders of the spiritual master. And then he proceeded to go to the West. And after establishing Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada came back to India. So Bombay was very dear to Prabhupada. Prabhupada spent more time in Bombay than in any other city in India. He wrote more letters from Bombay in any other part of the world. And Prabhupada was very fond of these rather raspberry deities. Prabhupada used to carry a picture with him, Radha Rasbihari, wherever he went. These deities were donated by the Birla family to his court. And, 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 and as I just said, they were first worshipped in the Akash, in the, yeah, they were first worshipped in the festival across Milan. And then they were moved to Juhu. And finally in January, Makrishan Kanti, they were finally installed. So you devotees residing in Bombay are very fortunate. They're very fortunate because you have the opportunity to serve in an area, serve in a temple, which was virtually Prabhupada's headquarters. Prabhupada called Bombay his office. And and Vrindavan, place of worship. And Mayapur is place of worship, and Vrindavan is his residence. So Prabhupada gave a lot of importance to Bombay. And we devotees have the op- golden opportunity of serving in the temple where Prabhupada resided. And if we sincerely endeavor, Krishna will help us. So I'm sorry that I'm not in Bombay at the same to this time. I want to offer my obeisances to all the devotees in Bombay, especially Bhima, Devakinanda, Rajahari, and all the Vaishnava are present. And we hope that we can meet soon. I want to gradually come there 
but the virus situation is so serious that people are advising me not to travel at the moment. So thank you very much. And thank you, Brother Hari. There's a lot to say about Bombay, but we have limited time today. And I have to proceed to another program. Hare Krishna.